Nighttime fans, this interview is with Tom Nolan out of Team Compton. Now, Tom has been recently signed to Dana White Contender Series uh, Season 7, Week 1, August 8th uh, in Las Vegas. Now, if you don't know Dana White Contender Series, it's like a pathway to the UFC. Uh, basically, there's five, six fights on, on the night. Uh, if you impress, not even just if you win, if you win boringly, you might not get a contract. Or if you lose, but excitingly, they might sign you anyway. It's basically a showcase where you want to be the most impressive you can. Uh, we've had many guys come through there. Jimmy Crew, Jack Jenkins, uh, Shannon Ross even lost and, uh, and ended up in the UFC. Uh, Jack Deller, of course. Uh, so many guys coming through Dana White Contender Series. And Tom Nolan out of Queensland uh, is, uh, is officially signed and uh, he'll be performing August 8th. Now, he's 5-0 and in the Australian MMA scene. Uh, had an extensive amateur career as well. Uh, so I'm super excited. Uh, we, we chat sort of his career projections, uh, how he thinks he's going to go, the, the sort of exciting backstory into his opponent and what his opponent is trying to do in the mind games sort of uh, sector of Tom Nolan. But uh, talking about the mind games, the mind of Tom Nolan is very, very interesting. Uh, I'm very, very impressed uh, with our chat. And uh, he goes now on the list of of some of the most intimidating guys that I've ever chatted to. The way he speaks, it's almost eerie uh, in, in, in how deliberate he is uh, and how he articulates his sentence. It's very, very scary. It's almost scarier than watching him fight and that is a scary feat in itself. But guys, without further ado, I would like to now welcome the man that will be fighting on Dana White Contender Series Season 7, Week 1, August 8th in Las Vegas, Queensland, Tom Nolan. Ladies and gentlemen, joining me on the show, the man that will be competing August 8th, Dana White Contender Series Season 7, Week 1, the big train, Tom Nolan, mate, welcome. Thanks for having me, mate. Look, it's been both the worst kept secret in all of Australian MMA, uh, first of all, I, I guess now it's a, it's official. You can talk about it. Yeah, yeah, I'm allowed to talk about it now. I'm not sure why I had to wait, but yeah, they made me wait for I think ten weeks to announce it. But like you said, a lot of people already got their hands on it, so it was already out there. Why were they so secretive? Because from everything that I've read, your opponent is still the undefeated TBA, uh, and we still don't know who you're taking on. Uh, are, are you aware, and you can't? tell us or uh no i know who i'm fighting um i'm pretty sure i'm all clear to talk about it now uh his name is bogdan grad he's 11 and 1 from austria yeah i i don't know if that's I'm, I'm pretty sure i'm all clear to talk about everything now but um yeah i don't know why they kept it a secret i think maybe promotion wise they wanted to wait till everything was you know visas and everything was sorted and uh when it comes to, to you you've had sort of like a unique uh entry into the ufc like like no title belt obviously five and oh young guy uh, how long was Dana White Contender Series on the cards for? Um, yeah, it's, we've been talking about it for a while now, me and my management. Uh, the plan was actually to get on that Perth card at the start of the year, but um, it didn't end up happening. So, yeah, the next plan was to get that 5-0 and and then get on the Contender Series after that. So, yeah, I've been, I've been planning for this for a while. So, why have they been... Why have they been so high on you for, for so long? Is it like, so when did uh, when did uh, Ruby Sports come along? When did you get uh, repped? When did you think like, oh crap, this is going to turn into an actual proper pro career? Um, Ruby picked me up at 2-0 uh, just after I beat Trevor Sinclair. And then after I beat Neam, that's when we started having talks about, you know, you're, you're getting in the realm of uh, contender series or the call up. And the reason I believe so is because you know I'm knocking people out in brutal style, so that's why. When you first walked into into an MMA gym, did you did you always think, man, this is going to be this is going to be my career? Yeah, absolutely, hundred percent since day one. And when you get represented, because a lot of guys out there are, are trying to uh, are wanting to be managed, uh, did they just? Did they just come up and contact you? They just message you, slide into your DMs? How'd it happen? Yeah, yeah, I just slid in my DMs. I've had a bunch uh, since then try to do the same, but, you know, I'm, I'm very happy with my team. So, but yeah, it was the same thing. They just uh, sent me a DM after the fight and we had a phone call and yeah, from there. Are you one of those guys that's like, hey, you, you know, you kind of want to me when no one else did. So that's like true loyalty? 
Yeah, hundred percent, man. You know, they um they told me this is what was going to happen, and now it's happened. So yeah, they've they've done a really good job. And in terms of the career uh, and and at the gym, are, are you treated any any differently? Like a, a camps now around you, or are you just another guy in the gym in a class? Um, well, you know, I train out of Team Compton Training Center, and it's uh, it's not the same as every other gym. You know, we're 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 really tight. We're like uh, we're all best mates there. So. Nothing changes, you know, a few jokes here and there, but like it's, it's, I'm the same guy, you know, every day in the gym, nothing changes, you know, I'm not like, we don't uh, treat anyone differently, you know, it's, we're all in camp, we're all getting better, better together. So, yeah. and you often in Vegas uh, a couple of weeks ago, I believe you only just gotten back. What was the process? Like, what were you there for? Were you running physicals or just checking, checking the place out? Uh, all media. So like a little interview, um, some footage of me hitting the bag, hitting some pads, uh, doing a, little strength circuit um yeah that was pretty much it just all promo for the for the fight and when you got signed for the Dana White Contender Series was it uh, the opponent like didn't matter was it even floated by you or was it just like man I'm gonna fight anyone anytime and they're just gonna tell me who it is well of course you know I'm, I'm gonna fight anyone especially for that opportunity but um yeah I'm I'm very confident in this matchup I uh I think I'm gonna get this guy out of there pretty early and very violently you know um I think he's lucky to be in this position. He's got a big record, but if you go and have a look, pretty questionable people he's fought. So um, I think he might have um, experience in terms of numbers, but I think I definitely have experience in terms of people I've fought. Now, do you still keep an eye on uh, the Australian scene? Because it looks like you kind of like, always knew you were going to almost leapfrog everyone else. And I even remember breaking it down with Callum Potter. And when you were talking about at the UFC early on, uh, we were like, wow, he, he like, you just beat Aiden Aguilera. Great, great sort of uh, matchup, but you didn't even sort of look at the title. You were ready to sort of make that, that big jump. Do you just feel that everyone else in the Australian lightweight scene isn't, isn't on your level? Um, I wouldn't say that. I think, I think the Australian scene altogether, I think we're the best uh, in the whole world. I reckon, I reckon we're the, the most professional and the highest skilled but I just think I stand out. I think I am, I'm going to be a star in this game. So I just think, um, yeah, everything, the stars aligned, you know, I've made things happen and I knew I was definitely going to be in this position soon for sure. And what is it about you that, that is so special? Um, I guess it's my want to hurt someone, you know, like I, I don't go in, in to, in to compete. This isn't like a game for me. This isn't about winning or losing. This to me is about like really, really hurting this person. You know, if you sign that dotted line saying you can beat me, and I sat, signed it saying I can beat you. One of us is now a liar. Someone has to get punished for that. Someone has to be found out for that. And where do you think that came from? Like, did you have a tough childhood? Are you just a competitive guy? Like, what? where do you think that that want to hurt comes from? Um, yeah, you could say other things in my life have led me to be that way. But um, yeah, you know, I think it's good. I think it's a good attribute to have. You know, this is all I care about. This is all I live for. I only live to be the best in the world at MMA. That's all I care about. I, I truly mean that. Nothing else matters to me. So yeah, if you, if you step across from me in the cage, I, I take that very personally. I'm, I'm there to hurt you. I'm there to take everything from you. And how did you first walk into a mixed martial arts gym to begin with? Um, I was playing football, like rugby league, and I was trialing for Queensland. And I wanted to do something in the off season. And yeah, I just, I just really enjoyed jiu-jitsu. So I stuck with it and had my first fight and that was it. And what's probably been your toughest moment in your, in your career so far that has made you almost perhaps second guess your career? Um... My transition between amateur and pro was hard because uh, COVID hit. Uh, I got injured pretty bad and I started growing. So I had to move into the next weight division up. And it was a bit of a long layoff. If you look at my career, you can see it goes 2019, 2020, 2021, and then it kicks off again. Uh, that was, you know, a lot of opponent pullouts, a lot of people not wanting to fight, corona happening and events being cancelled over and over. And that was definitely hard because I had to go back to working and get some money in my pockets. And But I think that's also a large part of my growth, you know, like, that experience in the outside world and being, I guess, a normal citizen has, has taught me some some good lessons that translate well to the cage. And speaking of working, uh, I mean, how how's your sort of full time career working out? You're obviously training a, a fair bit. Are you working on the side, sponsors, PTs? How's it working for you? Um, I'm doing a few PTs here and there, but other than that, I'm just training. That's it. Nothing else. When you had uh, say like a, your tough loss, we had Aaron McConnell right in, in the amateurs. What do you do mentally to get yourself back on track? Well, I was only a, um, a kid back then. Um, back then, I didn't have any striking. I consider myself a grappler. Um, I'm, I'm really thankful for that loss. You know, that taught me a lot. That, that actually made me shape to be the fighter I am now. I think going into that fight, 
my fights prior to that, I wasn't as aggressive. I was quite young still. I think um, that taught me like, hey, if I'm going to do this, I've got to like really want to hurt someone. You know, I've got to really want to put the pain on someone. So I went away and got a lot better. And actually, I would say now my style is really well-rounded, but I would consider myself a striker. I do like to finish it on the feet. Um, and if it wasn't for that loss, I probably would have gone pro too early. And then I would have found out that lesson in my pro career, which could have, you know, that could have been not, not very good. And uh, who was instrumental in that turning point in your striking? Uh, Vinny Perry, Vincent Perry definitely um, helped me out a lot uh, with that. And now obviously Team Compton's, I've just hit a whole new stride. Like I, I had good striking and now I feel like I have great striking. So, so you weren't with Team Compton the whole time? So I grew up in Toowoomba. I um I was out of uh, PFS uh, yep. under Possum. Yep. And then I went to uh, the Gold Coast for a couple of years and Corona hit. And then I went back home uh, to do some work and, and get over my injury. And I was training with Possum again. And then I moved to uh, Brisbane. And uh, you seem like a man that's going to do absolutely anything and to make it. Uh, could we see the move over to America or do you think you have it all here in Australia? Yeah, uh, Team Compton, that's definitely my home. You know, um best coaching staff in the world, in my opinion. And uh, the teammates, it's like, like we are like a family, you know, if it's something wrong, we're all there for each other outside of the cage. And that's something that I think is really important in this game. And uh, I asked this question to Jack Della way back in uh, UFC Perth about, even though the world didn't know yet, just mentally where he thought he sat in the welterweight division in the world. Where do you think you sit in the lightweight division in the world? I think I could absolutely take out some people in top 15 right now. Where does this like, I mean, skills apart from it, but like, where does this confidence come from you? Because there is not like one ounce of doubt. You can feel it in every one of your answers every time you talk, all of your fights. Like, is it a bit of like fake it till you make it? Do you get scared backstage or do you just truly believe you're the best in the world? I do the work, man. You know, um, we're training the way that no, no one else is training the way we're training. I can guarantee you that. And that's why I'm confident because I put myself through hell every single day. And I know people aren't doing what I'm doing. I know for a fact they aren't. So when we get in there, it's like, man, I've got this gas tank that you're not going to be able to hang with. So skill for skill, I mean, I, I definitely match myself up there as one of the best. But when it comes to grit, who wants it more? We're going to find out. We talk about guys not doing, uh, not willing to do what you guys do and train how you train. How are you training at Team Compton? Oh, we'll have to keep that a secret, brother. We can't let our let our little secrets out, you know. But we're training hard, man. You know, we're we're very smart, we're very precise, and we're very specific with how we do things. And I think that's look at the results. You know, we just fought. Uh, we had two guys last night, two and zero, oh, and then we had uh, two and one the weekend before, which was it was close to being three and zero. Oh, uh, oh, mate, you know, I think Oh, mate got lucky in that fight, but yeah. If you look at our team, we're, we're, uh, we're on a big trajectory at the moment. And uh, how has your sort of preparation changed? Obviously, getting ready for like eternal fights as opposed to getting ready for Dana White Contender Series. You've obviously got a long run up to this Dana White Contender Series. It's an international fight. Uh, what sort of changed in your preparation? Well, we treat every fight like it's the biggest fight. So I guess other than specifics for my opponent, nothing's really changed. Like like the programming's still very similar. It's just, um you know, my opponent, he's four foot nothing he's very small so we're, we're getting very uh specific for that style for what he's going to bring forward um but other than that man we're, we're always we're always getting after it and how important is it for you to get a, a violent finish in Dana White contender series because we've seen guys before win and not get a contract we've seen guys lose and got to get a contract i mean we, we have one here shannon ross who put on a, a great performance and ended mm. up getting signed obviously not going into lose but how important is it to get that finish yeah, it's very important to me. I, obviously, I really want that contract. And also, I've got a point to prove. You know, this guy, he thinks he's better than me. He's been uh, DMing me, telling me he's going to beat me in that. So Really? I'm, uh, yeah, yeah, sending me weird videos of him flexing. Like sent, He just, out of, out of the blue, sent me a video of him, like his back, like all flexing like this and then doing this. And I was like, man, you know, what's going on with that? Like, are you being serious? <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. Pretty strange. But that to me is like, well, now I've got to have to face plant you for that. So. So he's just been sending, he's just been hitting you up, not even publicly, just privately sending you messages. Not even like a message saying like, "Hey man, I'm gonna beat you" or anything. He just randomly sent me this video of him like flexing, and then I wrote back, "Oh yeah, like like nice, bro. Like like what's going on? Like you know what? This isn't bodybuilding, bro. We're in a fight. You know, what I mean? <laughs> pretty strange, but." Yeah, you know, I like it. It fires me up. I, I really enjoy that. Like, you know, if you, if he wants to make it like that, well, we're going to make it like that. We're going to see in the cage, you know? 
was going to say, you bit, you, do you mind the trash talk? Do you not mind the back and forth? Like, I don't go looking for it. I'm not out here trying to be disrespecting anyone. But, like, in saying that, you know, if you're going to do stuff like that, I'm going to be extra violent. I'm going to make sure that I hurt you. Yeah, he, I hope he shows up well prepared. I really want a good fight. Like, I don't mind if it's a three-round blood and guts war, but I just I can't see it going that way. You know what I mean? Like, I give... I usually give everyone, I usually say two rounds, but this guy, man, I think one round, I think I'm going to face plant him. I think it's going to be vicious. Okay. And this, and this is a question that I normally wouldn't ask many people, but you, you sound like a guy that he's got it all planned out. And he's said, and you're confident in how it's going to go, but mate, how long until we see you, the UFC lightweight champion? Oh, I'm not too sure with that yet. I haven't thought that like, I, I'm very careful with when I have a fight coming up, like, now I'm just zoned in on that. So I haven't even really thought past this at all because obviously I don't want to look through this guy. He's still, he's still dangerous. He's still really good. I'm not looking through him. Um, but yeah, I want to I wanna have a good long career. I don't want to get into the UFC and get out of the UFC. You know what I mean? So I'm not going to rush that process. I definitely want some good fights. I want some big names. I want to earn my way to the top 15. I want to dominate. But um, I'm definitely going to be the lightweight champion. Absolutely, I'm going to be. But I can't give you a time yet. And, uh, mate, one final question before I let you go. Uh, after it's all said and done, how does Tom Nolan want to be remembered in mixed martial arts? The most violent. Absolutely the most violent guy you've ever seen. That's what I want. There's two people that are super intimidating to talk to. Kevin Doucet, if you ever have a chat with him, <laughs> just the way he stares you down when he says stuff. And now you, you're on that list. We're on computer cool. screens and that was intimidating. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, mate, I wish you the best of luck. Um, thank you for 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 taking the time. Uh, and uh, and basically breaking news when you weren't supposed to, so I could look like a great journalist. But uh, <laughs> I'll stay on top of it all. Um, and hopefully we can have a chat after you get a super violent win. Cool. Thanks, brother. Thanks for having me on. Take it easy, bro.